I'm migrating from the NoSQL super performant AWS hosted DynamoDB to the super flexible workflow enabling hosted MySQL provided by PlanetScale. In this video, we'll cover why I'm switching databases and how I migrated my data using Rust. This decision is part of a larger series to determine whether Rust and Wasm are ready for prime time. So by the end of this video, we'll figure out if the switch was the right move and what the next steps are. DynamoDB is an incredible piece of technology that requires a large learning curve to make the best use of. But it's been a long time since I learned DynamoDB for the first time, so why am I moving away from it? Well, first off, let's cover the good things. DynamoDB is amazingly performant, both for reads and for writes. I've never had performance issues or scaling issues on this project, and I've never had to think about managing the number of connections from my applications. This is particularly good because the application is currently largely driven by serverless functions, which can easily overwhelm the amount of connections available in other databases. DynamoDB also integrates really well with AppSync, which I was using as a hosted GraphQL implementation to expose different data sources, including the data in Dynamo, which all sounds pretty great, and it is, so, why am I moving away from it? The biggest difference between DynamoDB and SQL databases is when the data modeling happens. DynamoDB is basically a key value store with some support for specific kinds of queries and indexes. You can fit pretty much any access patterns into the DynamoDB model, but you have to plan those access patterns up front to be able to design the data model and the indexes that you'll need to support these access patterns. This is a large part of why DynamoDB is so performant. It forces you to consider your access patterns up front and design your data for those access patterns. This makes queries extremely simple, often just fetching a key or a range of keys keys, but it means you don't have as much flexibility to change your access patterns on the fly. Which brings us to why SQL? Going back to the biggest difference between the databases, a SQL database allows you to do a lot more ad hoc querying. In DynamoDB, your access patterns are fairly locked in. It can be updated for new access patterns, of course, but it does take some work at the database level to create new indexes or reorganize how the data is stored. In SQL databases, you get to define your access patterns when developing the application itself, much later than the upfront nature of DynamoDB. Specifically, in this project, I've wanted to create a number of additional access patterns over the past six to 12 months. Access patterns that support anything from display some extra information on this page to build an admin UI. SQL supports adding new access patterns by querying different tables, while DynamoDB supports new access patterns by working with the data model. And to be clear, moving to SQL isn't a panacea. The cost for the extra query flexibility is CPU time and thus time spent waiting for the queries to finish. So once the decision was made to move to SQL, I had to solve some of the issues I didn't have to think about before when using DynamoDB. Specifically, I don't want to host the database myself and it has to support many connections. I don't want to host the database myself because my goal is more flexibility and thus a speedier development cycle when adding new access patterns to the application. Host monitoring, and generally keeping up a database manually doesn't help any of those goals. My database has to support many connections because I use serverless functions quite a bit, and serverless functions boot up as many database connections as there are concurrent requests. So while I didn't have to worry about that using DynamoDB, I do have to worry about that if I choose a SQL solution that requires me to make choices around memory and other resources. Now, there are some pretty guaranteed downsides here too. There is no way that whatever solution I choose is going to be cheaper than DynamoDB. DynamoDB's pricing is approximately $1.25 per million writes and 25 cents per million reads. It is extremely cheap. However, I am making money on this project, so I can use that money to pay for the infrastructure costs. The choice I made then for a hosted SQL database is PlanetScale. And I say PlanetScale instead of MySQL specifically because the difference between Postgres and MySQL doesn't matter to me. PlanetScale fulfills my requirements with a hosted serverless MySQL based on Vitesse. This means I don't have to worry about instance sizing or other resourcing constraints. Secondly, PlanetScale offers features that I would want even if I was hosting my own MySQL. This includes features that compare to GitHub's Ghost online schema migration tooling, a Git branching UI workflow, warnings if I try to drop a table in a schema migration accidentally, as well as query analytics for surfacing slow or hot queries. On the downside, I'm already paying for their $30 a month plan because while I don't necessarily need that plan level for reads or writes yet, the free plan will automatically spin down your database if you don't make schema changes. Not if you don't read and write from the database, but if you don't make schema changes. So if you're going to migrate, how do you do it? First, I needed to pull the data out of Dynamo, which you can do as a CSV file. 
I can use new shell to convert that into a JSON file, which you can see here on the left. All of the data I'm showing is kind of the public data. It's the course workshops and things like that. But I will have to do this for other data in the future as well. This data is fairly static, but it's also one of the major reasons that I wanted to move on from Dynamo to Planet Scale. Specifically, I want to have a more robust admin interface for uploading videos, fixing typos, and doing other admin-y actions. The admin interface itself will be built in Tori or eGUI or something like that, and SQL makes it vastly easier to do all of this without thinking about it ahead of time. For this prototype, though, I'm all about getting it done, not optimizing, which I can always do later. To start getting this data into planet scale, I wrote a quick SQL script to create a few tables that I felt like I would need and fired that off into a branch. And yeah, planet scale has basically the equivalent of git branching for your database schema, which is really useful. After setting up the tables, we need to set up the data we want to insert by parsing the course metadata.json file. For communication with the database, I chose to use SQL X because I'm familiar with it. And for dealing with the JSON, we're using Serde. And of course, Serde JSON. I use KSUIDs in this data set, so I wrote some code basically straight out of one of the workshops on Rust Adventure for encoding and decoding these KSUIDs into a MySQL database. Then I wrote some structs to match the JSON that I'm getting out of the JSON file, as well as some structs that match the tables in the SQL database. I didn't do too much data setup. I did do some minor validation, and I used a quick nom parser to do some additional validation, or rather, I parsed the data that I was using for the IDs in Dynamo into structured data that I then stuck into fields on my structs. Other than that, I needed to set up the database connection, read the JSON file in using Serde, and then I proceeded to iterate over it a couple of different times for the new tables and sort of restructure the data that I had in the JSON format into the data that I wanted to send into the new table schema. I did do some light filtering for some data that I didn't want to cross over. And other than that, this is basically a bunch of match expressions. Given the data I wanted to upload, we can iterate over that, throw on a progress bar in the CLI using Andikatif, which is a fantastic progress bar library that attaches to iterators for us. And then I use the compile time checked query macro from SQL X to write my SQL and validate that what I was passing in would, you know, work for the table schema. I didn't spend too much time doing this before throwing it all into the planet scale database because I had the knowledge that since it wasn't being used in production yet, I could always go back and change whatever I wanted to. This is also one of the things that SQL makes pretty easy, migrating data across different tables and whatever else you need to do. This was a major part of choosing SQL for this prototype, specifically the ease of making decisions later informed by the experience of actually building the product. Contrast that with the DynamoDB approach, which required me to define all of my access patterns up front and then made it a little bit harder to migrate my data later to support new access patterns. So was this the right choice? I think so. The additional flexibility that SQL is going to offer me is really what I was after here. DynamoDB is a great database, and there's no reason I couldn't migrate back to DynamoDB after I have a fuller understanding of all of the access patterns that I want from this product, or in fact, just migrate performance sensitive pieces back to DynamoDB. The next video in the series will cover building an API on top of the database we just created. So if you're interested in seeing that, click the subscribe button below, and I'll see you in the next video on this Rust and Wasm adventure.